Hey guys, Frank Cox here, the Barbecue Pit Engineer. Hey, I'm uh, back with another episode of the Smoker Builder Podcast. So on this episode, I decided I would talk about, uh, let's see, what do you want to talk about? Log racks. How about that? Should you have a log rack in your smoker or can you burn on the bottom? Question mark. Let's go. Hey guys, I'm back. So this is an exciting episode for me because I'll be honest with you, in the past, I would have uh, said, yes, absolutely, you must have a log rack. But these days, I think I cook more on the bottom than I do with a log rack. So what I'd like to do is just kind of tell you a little bit of my experience with both methods. Um, some of the some of the things I ran into that I needed to pivot with my cooking style or my fire management style or even the way I build a pit to allow for either or or both in the same cooker so not to sound indecisive or anything but there's reasons for all of it so anyway if you're listening to this and you'd rather watch me wave my arms and drink coffee while I talk to you driving down the road you can go over to YouTube and you can check this out on my YouTube channel make sure you give me a subscribe over there if you don't mind um, however, if you would rather not see me wave my arms, drink coffee, and drive down the road, you can listen to this podcast over on uh, iTunes or any podcast platform you've ever thought of. So it's all available out there as far as I know everywhere. So anyway, jump right into it here. So yeah, early on when we first started like making plans for people and like really getting down and geeking out on... Uh, airflow with pit design and efficiencies with the pit because it's not just about making a fire burn it's also about you know sometimes you want to squeak more efficiency out of that fire or sometimes you don't want it to be as efficient sometimes you want it to be a little sloppy you know and so early on we were designing pits to be really efficient and uh like clean almost clear smoke always and never never get white heavy smoke and uh really even temperatures across the cooking rack and things like that and so one of the ways that we pulled that off was with a log rack and with our air coming in under the log rack however there's a few downsides to that you know let's kind of take them one at a time here the, the first real downside that i ran into is that i would have coal bed like you, the whole the heartbeat of this system is your coal bed can you retain your coal bed for a reasonable amount of time 45 minutes 30 30 to 45 minutes something like that before you need to do something or do you have to add charcoal while you're cooking oh um, you know that that's a big part of it and with a log rack what I've found more times than not is uh, you'll you'll render coals out a little early depending on the size of the holes in your log rack. For instance, if you built a log rack with round bar, just straight rods, right? And let's say that you've got an index finger between each rod, about a half inch or so between the rods. Any coal, any piece of coal bed that's smaller than that will render out of it, will fall out. And as you go along, you're not harnessing the BTU capacity out of that coal, out of those fine coals like that. They just go down in the bottom and become ash. Or if you're using like three quarter number nine expanded metal, which has got a three quarter inch by a little bit longer than a three quarter of an inch bowl uh, in the shape of a diamond sort of throughout that entire log rack. Well, so that means that it's basically like classifying gravel or sifting, sifting dirt or whatever everything bigger than that gap will stay in the log rack and everything smaller than that will fall out so i mean this is this it's to me it's a downside because i could lose my cold bed too early there is a positive to it though is that if you really want to keep a lot of air going around the surface area of the bigger chumps then you can get that air going through that log rack and you won't have like ash plugging the air pad if, you know so that's two sides to that. Now, I will say this, is that I've worked with a log rack in a firebox to where the air comes under, even on a big thousand gallon pit. We built this big cold Luan back in the day. This has been quite a long time ago. 
And we thought we was really on top of things. And what we did is we made a smaller log rack in the middle of that firebox, which was about, the firebox was about 40 by 40 footprint, um, which is huge. And we had like a 24 by 20 log rack in the middle of it. Well, we had all this air around that log rack, places air could go around. And so we was like, freaking, let's block this thing off. There's no need to have you know, all of that free open area around the log rack. So the air, a hundred percent of the air came in under that plated off area. And the only way for it to get through was to go through that coal bed. I got to tell you, that was the most efficient pit I've ever built, right? So efficient that you're like, where's the smoke flavor? That's the catch. You get condensation and moisture. You wind up with, uh, you know, no smoke flavor, stuff like that. And it was important in that pit for the fine ash to fall through that log rack so that I could get all that air to go through the coal bed. So so that's kind of a couple of deals about the log rack in and of itself. Now let's pivot and talk about burning on the floor on the bottom of your firebox. Now I've talked a little bit about this in previous episodes, how that a uh, how that a uh, burning on the bottom like that there's nowhere for that fine ash and uh, small coals to go. Like they just basically stay there until they're completely consumed. Now, what happens is, is that just like we spoke a minute ago, the BTU capacity in a piece of charcoal that's on fire is the surface area of that charcoal that is in contact with oxygen. That's where the BTUs come from. If you're depending on the inside part of that charcoal, to get enough oxygen to actually radiate heat, it's not going to happen. It's all the surface area that that is getting the oxygen to it that is on fire that's giving us our heat. So when you have a big coal bed on the bottom, like you've been burning for four or five hours, you'll have a point there where you you've added wood every thirty to forty five minutes. You're burning a lot of uh, the wood chunks in there. They're rendering into into charcoal. You bust them up a little bit. You move it around maybe with your shovel. But all of that ash is sitting in there, and it literally insulates that surface area of the coal bed, of the coals that are in the coal bed. So oxygen can't go down. Well, it will a little bit, but it can't, like, penetrate efficiently into that coal bed. It's blocked off, the air path is. So if you're going to wind up with less of the, of the oxygen going down inside that coal bed and more of the air will just kind of graze because we're drawing. It'll just kind of graze over the surface of that coal bed and go right out the stack, right? So it's, it's really inefficient that way. But there's some bonuses there. You're not going to lose your coal bed because it's all sitting there. So all you got to do is stir it up once in a while. That's a good thing. You can rake it around and get the fine ash out every so often. Like every, I don't know, couple of hours go in there and just kind of shove the fire left to right depending on how your firebox is built you could take like a, a shovel or whatever and you can kind of sift out some of the fine ash and separate out the big coals then you can push it all back together and even it out on the bottom of the of the firebox have your coal bed where it gets oxygen now you've got more efficient fire in your coal bed but it's a lot more work for you to do all of that the other thing is is that you can just throw a split right on top of that and if it's been preheated it'll most likely just catch right away so you're going to get more intense flavor out of your out of a fire that's built that way so which way do i prefer these days well it just kind of depends on what i'm cooking so if i'm cooking it of competition let's say we're going to want, if I'm using an offset, which I kind of don't, I use the Super 55, which is on my head there, when I'm cooking barbecue contests, but there's a lot of successful guys cooking contests that are using offsets. What I've learned from those guys, most of them anyway, is that they don't want to see any smoke coming out that smokestack. If you watch uh, any of the videos that, for instance, uh, Nikia White, RWB, BBQ on Instagram, uh, he's one of my ambassadors. You watch any of his videos, he is really, really, really trying to run that clean the smoke on those bits. Or if you walk up to a guy that's cooking on any of the old uh, Jambos or Outlaws or any of that stuff, super clean fire, and they're using that log rack in there. 
As a matter of fact, they know the exact spot on that log rack to build their fire. Usually it's in the middle back or middle left, something like that. You'll see that they're not really putting a lot of wood on. They, they tend to just build a bigger fire with starting with charcoal and minimize how much wood they put on. You know, that's that's one right reason that I would use a, a, a log rack. I would not necessarily use that if I'm just cooking barbecue like I'm trying to do a Texas style brisket or something like that because it will inhibit bark formation. You know, you'll, you'll wind up with, like I say, CO2 and moisture is what you got left over. You're going to have a wetter bark. Uh, you're going to have a harder type set in that bark, in my opinion. So all we're talking about there is we're wanting to have a longer cook. We're wanting to have a better render, like get that yellow fat render. You know, we're cooking at a lower temperature. And, and all of that's really important for, for getting that style of barbecue. Whereas competition, we're cooking at a higher temperature. So I found it's easier for me to maintain that quality of barbecue if I'm burning directly on the bottom of my firebox. Now, the big concern here with a lot of people when you tell them that that's what you're trying to do is will it burn out the bottom of my firebox? Truth be told, I've been doing it a long time now. I haven't ever had a firebox, you know, delaminate like the steel delaminate or anything or the um, the bottom of the firebox wear thin or anything like that. It, it seems to me like it doesn't really have an effect unless you leave the ash sit in there when you're done cooking. If you leave that ash sit in there and it rains or you get a lot of condensation in the firebox because it's been sitting outside, whatever, you're not keeping it clean, that definitely will limit the life expectancy of your firebox. You wind up uh, with that that ash getting caustic in there and it starts to eat on the steel and stuff like that so that's the only downside i've seen with that but if you're like me and you keep your pit clean and you always wash out the firebox which i literally do i, I go ahead and just hose it out and then let it dry air dry what i do then is keep it clean i don't have any of those issues you know it won't ever burn through but as far as burning on the bottom, I really do think that I like that style of barbecue better. If I'm just eating barbecue, I, I really like that style of barbecue better. Guys, I'm about to choke my GPS alive right now, if I could reach her. But she's not, she's in the, she keeps interrupting me. So we're just going to cut this one here short. Let me know in the comments if that drove you crazy. I apologize. But anyway, until next time, keep your smoke thin and blue. And, uh, you know, if you're looking to get started on getting your next it whether you're going to build it yourself or you want me to build it for you best place to get started is go to smokerbuilder.com that's where the this the entry point into my world if you're new to smoker builder we've been doing this for a long dang time since about 2007 and uh 2010 when we actually started to help people with this and so anyway i think i can help you too so if you want get on over to smokerbuilder.com and start your journey now just to answer one simple question do you want me to build it for you? Do you want to build it yourself? Or do you need help deciding? That's all you got to do is let me know. And I'll get started helping you right away. So anyway, like I say, till next time, keep your smoke thin and blue. Have a great day.